undocumented Africans and undocumented Filipinos, right? Here we are, nearly 60 years later, arguing again about another 12 million people. And what's interesting to me is, because of SB 1070, because of the ruling that did stand, anyone who's suspected to be a quote-unquote illegal alien can be stopped and asked for their papers. But the question becomes, how can you tell what an illegal alien is? Is there a sign that says they're from Mars or something in their t-shirt? What does an illegal person actually look like? Which to me gets at this really broader and deeper question about the very history of this country, right? About the fact that since before there was even a Declaration of Independence, before you know there was a constitution, we had always argued about whom we consider to be American. So this was my blog. And Ariana, you know, when you go to the Huffington Post, there's a splash thing in the very top, so it was splashed for like a few hours. And then Geraldo asked me to go on a show on Fox, which I did. And then I get to my blog talk shortly thereafter and find this really interesting email. Now, I get a lot of hate mail, like a lot of hate mail. But this one, um, you know, I have really thick skin. I'm a writer, so I'm used to being criticized. Um, but this one kind of takes the cake, and I wanted to kind of share it with you. The headline is, Get Out of My Country. Senor Vargas, gather your things and pack them in a suitcase and get the hell out of America. The U.S. Constitution is for America. Okay, when somebody starts writing in caps, that means they're yelling at you, right? <laughs> the U.S. Constitution is for American citizens, not Mexicans, not El Salvadorians, and Guatemalans, or any other foreign citizen. I have followed your anti-American bigotry for quite some time now, along with your homosexual bullshit, I'm also gay, that you spit thinking anyone would feel pity for someone else's issues. A lot of great Americans have died fighting against enemies to protect the citizens of this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You are an enemy of the United States of America. Do me a favor and don't speak about America or the U.S. Constitution because you're not American and it's not yours and you wouldn't understand it for obvious reasons. The Declaration of Independence is written for Americans, not whatever you are. It's okay, you're not American. It's mine. And my fellow brethren, not some scumbag who shows up and demands all this shit, sorry, it's her language, for my tax money. Fuck you and I hope you get AIDS quickly since your rate is 99% risk rate. Now, let's forget the grammatical mistakes. Um, <laughs> no, not everybody is a writer. You know, the run-on sentences, a lot is two words, it's fine. Like, I'm not quibbling about that. Um, but you know, I have traveled to about 25 states, a lot in the South and in the Midwest. Uh, this is real. I actually ended up friending Kelly on Facebook um, she seems like a nice woman from Denver, but she hasn't friended me back. Um, this is a real thing. You know, we're in Miami. You guys, not only do you understand immigration, you live immigration. It's a personal thing. But how do we get this across to people, you know, who don't have the privilege of visiting Little Havana and having rice and beans? Who don't, who don't have the privilege of, like, walking around, you know, Lincoln Road and hearing, like, all these Spanish-speaking people? To them, that's a threat. How do we communicate to people who, do, who don't think the way that we do? So I want to kind of unpack all of this and kind of start from the beginning. I moved to America when I was 12. This was in 1993. Um, and my introduction to American culture was O.J. Simpson and the Bronco, uh, Nancy Kerrigan's knee getting whacked, and Seinfeld. I thought everybody was Jewish. And it was really fascinating for me to be in California, that's where I grew up, and the very question of the fact that we live in an America that's been mostly defined by the black or white duality, and then living in California that was all about Asian and Latin people, right? And it's funny, because in the Philippines, where I learned how to speak English, was watching Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson songs, listening to them and watching the music videos. I just assumed, and we all thought, that Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston were American. I didn't know that they were black until I got to America. And I didn't know that they were quote-unquote white people until I got to America. 
And in some ways, you know, as for a 12-year-old, it was really interesting to think that this country invented white as much as it invented black. And then trying to figure out, wait up, where does an Asian-looking person named Jose Antonio Vargas fit in that little equation? I remember when I was in sixth grade singing the national anthem, you know, in class, homeschool, in the, in, in the homeroom. And I thought it said, oh, Jose, can you see? So I'd be like smiling. And my eyes got to this country and like my name is in the, you know, anthem. That's so friendly. Um, and my, one of my very first friends was a guy named Shaman Curl, this tall African-American guy who always liked to wear orange pants. And at one point, I think he remembered seeing me, like, smiling as I'm, like, looking at the flag, and Sherman goes, dude, Jose, like, they're not talking about you. <laughs> so he was the one that broke the news that it was Jose, not oh, Jose, can you see? And four years later, I found out that this flag that I had been pledging allegiance to actually didn't belong to me. So my mom sent me to California to live with her parents, my grandparents, both of whom are American citizens, naturalized American citizens. My grandpa was a food server, my grandma was a security guard. And what was interesting is, after going to the DMV, like any 16 year old to get a driver's permit, I showed this woman my DMV card, you know, my, uh, my green card as proof of ID. She flipped it around, and then she lowers herself, and she goes, you know, this is fake. Don't come back here again. That's how I found out. Now, mind you, when she told me that, my first instinct was she was lying, right? And I actually remember riding my bike from the DMV to home and stopping. I was, I was, I was riding my bike down Ringstorp Avenue, and I stopped, literally stopped my bike when I got in the front of Mi Pueblo, which was the Mexican market where I grew up. So I'm like, wait, maybe the DMV woman thought I was Mexican or something. Because you know, I grew up in California, right? Whenever they think illegal, what do they think? Mexican. I was, I was a victim of my own ignorance. I thought that, wait up a second, maybe she didn't know I was like 